While we look forward to salary day every month, the 31st of May or the 30th of June have always been a bit special for me because that's when I used to receive my annual bonus. Of course, that's no longer the case now that I'm self-employed. But a lingering question for most salaried people out there is, how can I use this bonus wisely? Should I spend it? Should I invest it? On what should I invest? Should I prepay my loan, etc.? Now, I for one have always tried to maintain that fine balance between enjoying the bonus and investing it. And if you're a bit like me and you like to keep your personal finances in order, then I think you'll find this video helpful. This is not an investing strategy video, but it's more of a decluttering video as I present six areas where you can effectively and efficiently deploy your annual bonus. Let's begin. The question on how one can use the bonus wisely well, the answer to that starts a lot prior to you receiving that money. In fact, the answer lies in a quick financial plan that you can write on a Word document or on a worksheet. And this should include things like your big financial goals for the year, things like paying a sizable installment for your under construction apartment, your long term financial goals like your child's education or building a retirement corpus, your monthly expenses, especially if forecasting a change in it during the year, any major and important expenses you have planned, something like a surgery that's coming up in a couple of months, a list of outstanding loans, your tax liabilities on account of capital gains and advance tax. And finally, this plan or tracker should have your existing investment portfolio, including your mutual funds, stocks, PPF, EPF, NPS, etc., how you have allocated assets for different goals, your list of SIPs, etc. To help out, I have enclosed a quick worksheet in this video's description that is designed to present an investor a single view of where he or she stands in terms of their finances. This worksheet is downloadable or you can make a copy of it on Google Sheets and customize it as per your requirements. It's an important step in the process and you'll see in the coming sections how this little pre-work can massively improve the output of your financial decisions. Now, the investment part of an annual bonus can be looked at in two ways. One, can this money be used to reduce my financial burden? And secondly, can this money be utilized to improve one's financial portfolio for this year and for the years to come? Let's start with the part that aims to lower our financial burden. Now, the word loan causes a certain stress in most people. And in that context, one should definitely use their bonus money to clear out some of the high interest debt that they might be incurring on credit cards, personal loans, business loans, two-wheelers, etc. This not only gives us more disposable income, but a prepayment can visibly reduce the number of EMIs as well. For example, let's say you take a 30 lakh home loan at an interest of 8% for a tenure of 20 years. This comes to an EMI of approximately 25,000 rupees. Now, if you're able to prepay just 50,000 rupees every year from your annual bonus, you can actually close your loan in the 15th year itself and you would have saved an interest of about 9 lakh rupees. In fact, many such combinations are possible, but one must also mathematically measure it against the tax benefits the government offers on home loans, the penalty on prepayment that is charged by some banks, and of course, the opportunity cost of investing this money in a financial instrument like a mutual fund, etc. But as a general rule, and my own preference is to prepay or at least reduce my debt to the extent possible and the amount of interest I can save from even an 8 or a 9% loan can be a lot higher than the returns offered by a fixed income option on a post-tax basis. In the same lines, another option one can explore is to move your annual bonus into a home loan savings account, which not only reduces your interest outgo, but it also does that without taking away your liquidity. A second burden that an annual bonus helps in reducing are the taxes. With the Indian stock market going up and down and every budget introducing some or the other tax related changes, I think we investors have been rather active in the last two to three years. So there's been buying and selling of securities and over time, a decent amount of capital gain does get built up on which tax is payable. Now, if you aren't careful, these taxes can amount to quite a bit. And in my case, in 2021 and again in 2022, I had to apportion some part of my annual bonus to pay my capital gain tax when I was filing my income tax returns. So if you're someone with a sizable investment corpus and if you like to tactically play the stock markets, then an annual bonus can certainly be helpful when you next file your income tax returns. A third use of the annual bonus is to bolster one's emergency fund. 
The general rule is to have around six months worth of expenses, which can come handy at the time of unforeseen circumstances like a job loss or a medical crisis. If you don't have an emergency fund or if it isn't funded well enough, then your annual bonus is the perfect opportunity to rectify the situation. Remember, an emergency fund should be available and accessible to you at short notice, which means one should avoid investing in volatile or illiquid instruments. In that context, go for liquid funds, money market, ultra short duration, or you can simply use a combination of fixed deposits and your savings account to maintain that emergency corpus. In fact, many banks even offer a sweep-in facility where money in a savings account above a specified threshold automatically goes into that fixed deposit that earns you a slightly better return. Having said this, personally, I prefer to use my savings account along with a money market fund or ultra short duration fund. And the reason for doing this instead of a sweep-in facility is to avoid the temptation of dipping into my emergency fund for discretionary expenses, which obviously defeats the purpose. But all said and done, do use the annual bonus to prop up your emergency fund and try to bring it to up to six times of your monthly expenses. Now, if you already have your loans, your taxes and the emergency fund in place, then the logical next step is to invest your annual bonus towards wealth creation. This can be for your retirement corpus, your child's future, her education, etc. And the constant theme that prevails is what you invest, what you sow today determines what you shall reap in the future. So very quickly, for fixed income, you can invest in a fixed deposit, PPF, VPF, corporate bonds, and even an annuity can be purchased. One can also invest the bonus in NPS, the national pension system that gives you tax-free returns and also offers tax benefits. For a girl child, there is Sukanya Samriddhi Yojana that offers one of the highest interest rates amongst all small saving schemes. And of course, there are mutual funds, stocks, and ETFs of every kind. Now, within mutual funds, different category of funds offer a different return and risk profile. Because the bonus money has come as a lump sum, I looked at a few popular categories to understand the rolling returns across different years. For instance, on a three-year basis, the Nifty 50 has delivered a maximum CAGR of 32% and a minimum CAGR of minus 4.5%. But on an average, the Nifty has given 11.6% in returns over any three-year period, and it stays around that same 11-12% number when we examine rolling returns on a 5, 7, or 10-year basis. More importantly, this rolling return analysis also helps us understand the probability of different indices delivering a certain range of returns, which is definitely helpful for investors like us. For example, the Nifty Midcap 150 index in the last 15 years has not seen a single occasion when the five-year CAGR went below zero. In fact, based on historical data, if one were to deploy their lump sum annual bonus to this mid-cap 150 index, then there is a 30% probability that they will make an annualized return of over 20% over a five-year period. So if you're going the lump sum way, then that's some food for thought. And if you want to try out more such combinations, then do head to a website like advisorcoach.com for more information on this front. Now, beyond lump sum, there is, of course, the systematic investment route. And the ideal approach here is to do a systematic transfer plan or STP. How this works is that you take the bonus of, say, 3 lakhs and you invest it in a debt fund, preferably a short duration fund like a liquid fund, money market, ultra short or low duration fund. You can then define the amount, the number of transfers and the frequency. And as an example, let's say that's 20,000 rupees, 10 transaction and a monthly debit. The simple STP setup means that every month a sum of 20,000 rupees will be transferred from the source fund, which is our short duration debt fund, to a target fund, which can be an equity fund like a flexi cap, a large cap or an index fund. So essentially, instead of putting the entire bonus into equities in one shot and exposing yourself to a timing risk, you can slowly transfer the money towards equities in a systematic manner while the debt fund continues to give better returns than the savings account. This is something I have done a number of times and I'm a big fan of this approach. And a third path one can take is to create a portfolio of stocks with your bonus money. Of course, a mutual fund is also a portfolio of stocks, but if you want to create your own, then you can either use small case or you can try out any of the many strategies I've already explained on this channel. Coffee can investing, the magic formula, Peter Lynch's approach to finding small cap stocks, Ambit Capital's 10-bagger portfolio, the Monopoly portfolio, etc. So look inwards, try to figure out what best suits you and wish you the very best. 
If you're getting good value from this video, then please do give this video a thumbs up. And if you aren't a subscriber yet, then do consider becoming one as I can then serve you videos as soon as they are released and also share with you some investing strategies, tips and stories that I continually post in the community section. So I've discussed the importance of having a well diversified asset allocated portfolio in many of my videos and the numbers justify it with an asset allocated portfolio not only doing a little better in terms of return, but it does so by taking a lot less risk. Now, over time, we all form a preference on which combination of asset classes we are most comfortable with. For instance, I prefer about 60% in equities, 30 in debt and about 10% in gold. Now, let's say I have a corpus of 1 crore rupees and over the year that went by, equities did very well, debt was pretty stable while gold actually declined a bit. Now, since the portfolio value has risen to 1.08 crores and I have to get the three asset classes back in the same 60, 30, 10 ratio, it means I will have to sell 2.2 lakhs worth of equities and purchase 40,000 rupees of debt and 1.8 lakhs worth of gold. Understandably, this would attract some capital gain tax. However, if I were to not do anything with equities, that is, I let it stay at 67 lakhs, then the corresponding rebalance corpus for debt comes to 33.5 and for gold, it comes to 11.2 lakhs. In other words, I can use my annual bonus to purchase debt worth 1 lakh 10,000 rupees and 37,000 rupees of gold and can continue to maintain my preferred 60-30-10 ratio without having to pay any capital gain tax. In other words, the annual bonus can serve as a fantastic tool to help you rebalance your investment portfolio and consequently improve your portfolio's risk-suggested return. In fact, the example I gave you is pretty much how I use any lump sum money I receive. And while all of my equity accumulation happens on an SIP mode, I tend to use my bonus and all lump sum monies to invest in debt instruments. The final area I want to talk about is on investing in oneself. And no, I'm not talking about buying some books or enrolling for a course, but to actually use some parts of this bonus as starting capital and to complement it with your own skills to develop a sustainable side hustle. For example, to start a podcast series, all you need is a decent microphone and some accessories which should not cost you more than 20, 25,000. After that, it's your contacts, the network you build, how you ask questions, how you spread the word, marketing, making your podcast popular, etc. And if you do all of this well, then believe me, a podcast is one of the best and the most cost effective way of creating connections with the who's who of your industry. And it also helps you with personal branding. Similarly, you can do some freelancing, you can buy and sell products, create an online course, build a digital marketing agency, etc. My point is one of the big changes surrounding work is that traditional jobs employment is getting increasingly unpredictable and at the same time it's getting more and more possible for a single individual to market his or her skills to the world at large and make a name for oneself. In other words, the barriers that once confined talent to a particular time, a place of work, policies etc. are steadily fading away. And if you haven't thought hard about it, then I suggest you start now and take better control of your career and destiny. Right, so these were some areas I wanted to discuss on how one can use that bonus money in more effective ways. We looked at some ways of reducing your financial burden. We also talked about investing for future wealth. And in an interesting twist, I also spoke about how your bonus can be the starting capital, a starting point to something wonderful in your personal and professional life. So this wasn't exactly an investing video, but it's definitely a question each of us have asked ourselves at some point in our lives. And I hope you found some parts of this video useful. Once again, thank you for your time. Do like this video, do subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you three days from now. Until then.